Right now, there are real, sharp, and incredibly detailed records captured on the ground of a world that isn't Earth. They aren't AI-generated images or CGI. It's Mars in ultra-definition, exactly as the eyes of human-made machines saw it. What you're about to watch forever changes how we picture the red planet, because the Mars that lives in our imagination doesn't look like the Mars the rovers revealed. Every frame in this story was obtained by NASA robots that crossed, centimeter by centimeter, the Martian surface. A lone, persistent, tireless spirit, opportunity, and curiosity. Three pioneers that went farther than any machine had ever gone there. The cameras on these explorers, cutting edge when they launched, now give us something extraordinary. A real Mars with texture, scale, silence, harshness, and beauty. For the first time, these records were restored and assembled in true 4K, so the landscape feels just a few steps from where we are. The names that appear in the captions, Glen Torridon, Namib Dune, and Vera Rubin Ridge, aren't from fiction. They're informal designations used by mission teams to map the alien terrain. This isn't just a video, it's a window and it opens onto a world almost no one has had the chance to see like this. Every photo that arrives is a piece of the puzzle, a loose record full of dust and invisible context. But when the pieces are joined, the magic happens. What you see here isn't animation or simulation. It's a sequence built from thousands of real photographs collected over two decades of exploration. How do you turn static images into a fluid crossing? It all starts with mosaics. The rovers don't snap a wide panorama with a single click like a phone camera. They map their surroundings in a grid of overlapping high-definition frames, sweeping the scene line by line like a patient scanner. Every shot is calculated, every angle carefully decided. It's not point and shoot. It's engineering precision. On Earth, these frames arrive like a shuffled deck, some blown out others too dark, some with gaps. Sometimes the lighting changes mid-sequence. There's dust, blur, reflections. To create a usable panorama, teams have to align, color correct, remove artifacts, and stitch dozens, sometimes hundreds, of photos until they form a continuous image. That's why, at certain moments, small black bands appear. They mark places where there was no record, either due to positioning limits or to save power. Once the mosaic is ready, the motion comes in, not through animation, but with a smooth cinematic drift, a digital traveling shot that moves through the scene at 60 frames per second, preserving detail in ultra-high definition, no artificial zoom or stretching that destroys information. What appears is exactly what was photographed, only now, the image breathes. This technique gives us something unprecedented. The feeling of being there, in first person, without anyone having taken a step, and some mosaics go even further, reaching such absurd pixel sizes that you can zoom in deeply without losing sharpness. Among them, one stands out for both scale and what it reveals about the planet's ancient past. Between November 24th and December 1st, 2019, the largest mosaic ever assembled from the Martian surface was recorded. More than a thousand individual images were aligned and calibrated to form a continuous panorama. The final result is about 1.8 billion pixels. Billions, with a B. To give a sense of what that means, if this image were printed at full size, it would be wide enough to stretch beyond a football field. And the detail doesn't vanish when you zoom in. Rocks, grains of soil, wheel tracks. It's all there, without fanciful filters or tricks. Where exactly was this mosaic made? In an area known as Glen Torridon, at the foot of Mount Sharp, inside Gale Crater where curiosity has been slowly climbing for years. The spot wasn't chosen at random. There was a suspicion of clay-rich deposits, a geological signature that forms in the presence of water. On Mars, clay is scientific gold because it points to long-lasting water stability. Not a quick event, but a potentially habitable environment. 
Many researchers believe that billions of years ago, this region was a lake bed, fed by rivers, shielded from radiation, and with conditions to host microorganisms. When the rover swept its cameras across Glen Torridon, it wasn't just chasing pretty landscapes. It was recording layers of Martian history, sediments shaped by time, erosion, and water that dried long ago. You can make out the terrain's texture, the small ridges where the wind passed, the cracks in the clay indicating drying and shrinkage, subtle color changes that suggest different minerals. It's not just photography. It's a geologic map, a time capsule, and a work of art at the same time. Even silent, the scene speaks loudly. It isn't an abstract hypothesis. It's evidence that Mars had water, perhaps in shallow lakes, perhaps in shallow seas, that changes the question. Instead of, was there water? It becomes, what else was there? And could something alive have thrived? The landscape is striking, but looking up is surprising too. The Martian sky sometimes appears as a soft, dusty red, as if the planet lived in an eternal sunset. In other images, the sky looks strangely familiar, almost blue. So, what's the real color? Both, in different contexts. Mars has a thin atmosphere made mostly of carbon dioxide, filled with ultrafine dust particles. These grains scatter light differently than here, on Earth. Nitrogen and oxygen molecules scatter more blue light, which gives the sky the color we know. On Mars, dust dominates so much that it tends to scatter longer wavelengths, pushing the spectrum toward reddish tones during the day. If you were standing on the surface, you'd see a generally pale orange sky, sometimes pinkish beige. Not bright red, but not golden, either. And why are there photos with a bright blue sky? because teams sometimes apply a specific white balance. It's like adjusting the lighting so that the colors of rocks and soil resemble what we'd see under terrestrial light. Geologists use this to compare minerals and highlight contrasts and textures. When a blue sky appears on Mars, it's not a fraud. It's processing aimed at analysis. One version shows Mars as observed there, the other shows how that scene would look under Earth-like conditions. Both have value. They're distinct perspectives. On top of that, the Martian sky changes with time of day, season, and the amount of dust suspended in storms. The light drops to a deep sepia. Sunrises and sunsets flip Earth's logic. Near the sun, the glow can turn blue. All of this has been captured by the rover's silent eyes motionless in a world that never stops changing. But the most moving part of this journey isn't just what the robots saw, it's what they became and the trail they left before falling silent. Every great exploration has its pioneers. On Mars, they were called Spirit and Opportunity. They weren't the first machines to touch the planet, but they were the first to truly explore it. Launched in the summer of 2003, the twins were part of a bold plan. Land on opposite sides of an alien world and search for signs of ancient water. Each was designed for a short mission. 90 souls, about one kilometer of travel. What came next exceeded all expectations and captured people around the world. Let's start with spirit. It descended in Gusev Crater, a region many suspected once held a lake. At first glance, the terrain seemed desolate, basaltic plains, wind-blown dust fields, scattered rocks. Even so, spirit persisted. It climbed the Columbia Hills and began revealing evidence of hydrothermal activity, mineral veins, and patterns consistent with the ancient presence of liquid water. It wasn't fast or flashy. It was resilient. It faced brutal temperatures, dust storms, and mechanical failures. After losing the use of one wheel, it kept going in reverse. Then in 2009, after nearly six Earth years of work, it got stuck. The wheels sank into soil that was too soft. Multiple attempts to free it failed. NASA turned it into a stationary science station. It kept operating until the signal faded. The last message wasn't a dramatic quote. It was data. Its final act was science. On the other side of the planet, 
opportunity landed in Meridiani Planum, a vast plain with an intriguing signature, small, hematite-rich spheres, nicknamed blueberries, which form in the presence of water. In a few weeks, it delivered exactly what it had been sent for, concrete proof that water once existed there, and it kept going. It crossed stadium-sized craters, survived several Martian winters, climbed the rim of Endeavor Crater, and studied very ancient rocks. It racked up more than 45 kilometers of travel, a record for off-Earth driving. But it wasn't just the science. Little by little, many people began to feel something hard to explain, an emotional connection to a robot millions of kilometers away, maybe because of its persistence, maybe because it carried on long past its deadline, maybe because opportunity became a mirror for our own traits, curiosity, stubbornness, hope. In June 2018, everything changed. A planet-wide dust storm, the worst in decades, enveloped Mars and plunged the surface into dim light. Opportunity's solar panels stopped generating power. The batteries ran down. Months of attempted contact. More than a thousand commands sent. The silence remained. On February 13, 2019, NASA said goodbye. The last packet wasn't poetry. It was telemetry. The team translated the moment into human terms in a way that spread around the world. My battery is low, and it's getting dark. One of the greatest explorers in history fell silent like that. No fanfare, no ceremony, just Martian wind and dust covering wheel tracks. The legacy remained in every mission that followed, in every instrument on curiosity, perseverance, and even the little helicopter ingenuity there are sparks of spirit and opportunity. They taught us that even in a world that seems lifeless, a machine can inspire affection, loyalty, and grief. They weren't just tools, they were storytellers, and the stories they started are still being written. When it seemed Mars's ground had already given all it could, an explorer of a different kind arrived. Small, experimental, with spinning blades. The name, Ingenuity part of the Perseverance mission, launched in July and landed on February 18th, 2021. This tiny helicopter, smaller than a backpack, carried a bold idea. Is it possible to fly on another planet? Think about the physical challenge. Martian air pressure is about 1% of Earth's. In flight terms, it's like trying to lift a drone at 30,000 meters altitude. No bird reaches that. No helicopter had ever done anything like it. Ingenuity did. Its rotors spin around 2,400 revolutions per minute, about five times faster than helicopters here, just to generate lift in such thin air. It weighs roughly 1.8 kilograms, and even so, its first hop was one of the most exciting milestones since humans reached the moon. Planned for five short flights, it surpassed every expectation. It flew over alien dunes, helped map safe routes, avoided hazards ahead of perseverance, and made history. It became the first aircraft to fly on another world. And it wasn't just a technology demo, it was a guide. Its success opens the door to missions with aerial scouts capable of reaching what a rover never could. Steep slopes, deep craters, collapsed lava tubes, and areas that may hold signs of habitability. While Perseverance keeps drilling rocks, collecting samples, and preparing the way for those materials to one day be brought to Earth, Ingenuity flies alongside as a companion, a pioneer. The focus is no longer just Mars's past. It's a possible human future there. None of this would have been possible without what came before Opportunity's wheels. Curiosity's drill, spirit's quiet tenacity. Each built a stretch of road until someone dared to leave the ground and test the Martian sky. If it's possible to fly on Mars, what else becomes feasible? Networks of drones on other planets, swarms to study Venus, probes that hover over Titan's methane lakes. The future of exploration may not be limited to steps or wheels. It may be airborne, and it all began with a little helicopter that, on paper, had slim odds. 
but one. As these ultra-high definition images play on screen, one simple question is worth asking. Has it ever crossed your mind that Mars could look this real? Not just a distant reddish dot in a telescope, not a movie render, but a real place. Dusty, far away, full of detail. There's no trick here. These are records captured by machines we built, launched, and landed on another planet machines that survived for years in an environment that didn't want them there. What you have before your eyes isn't just a well-edited video, it's the surface of Mars, seen through the eyes of explorers that never came home. And the truth is, we've only touched the skin of the mystery Mars keeps secrets under its dust. Locked in rocks, whispered in the wind that crosses empty canyons, somewhere the story of its ancient water is still written, waiting to be deciphered. Somewhere there may be a clue about the origins of life. Every new image that arrives is another step toward answering a question older than the first human cities. Are we alone? Or did we simply arrive too early to this cosmic party? Mars's beauty isn't only in its dunes, cliffs, or faded horizons. It's in the fact that we're finally starting to understand what these landscapes tell. If this already made your head spin, wait until you see what's next. There are other journeys ready to spark curiosity and expand our place in the universe. If you enjoyed this, leave a like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.